Wish they'd take some of these knives out my bag. What's they doing? They're smiling in your face. All the time they want to take your place, the backstabbers. Backstabbers. I, 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 low down. When I first heard Backstabbers, it was pure rhythm, blues, soul, storyline, arrangement. It had the whole package together, man. The song that we're doing today is called Backstabbers, as originally recorded by the OJs for Philadelphia International Records on which I played on the original session back in the past century. One of the things that stands out uh, on that session is normally when we go in the studio, we'd maybe do two or three songs in the course of a day. However, on Backstabbers, Kenny Gamble kept running down Backstabbers all day. We tried like different versions of it and he wasn't quite satisfied. So he said, okay, fellas, Let's take a rest, come back tomorrow and do another version. So we came back the next day to do another version, which was a little heavier in the backbeat, a little more rocky, if you will. But the version they wound up using was one of the better ones from the previous day, because it, it had a natural feel to it, and it's something that lacked on the second day, it was too forced. They first go in with Leon Huff playing the piano and teaching the guys the chords. And, um, and then they would take it like, just get a drum feel, you know, the feel in the drum. Then just get the drums and the bass player together. And then let's call in one of the guitar players. And, you know, it was all pieced together and eventually orchestrated, you know, by Bill, uh, Bobby Martin. He would do all the orchestrations. Phenomenal arranger. And that's where the lush, you know, the violins and the horns all came in, you know. It was an amazing time, amazing music. Our dear friend, T.J. Tyndall, who recently passed, um, he played on this song. It was one of his favorites. It's one of our favorites. And uh, with the In the Pocket project, we've been doing this live with T.J. So really today is uh, special in several ways. We're doing it for T.J. and we're doing it for In the Pocket and we're doing it for hopefully everyone to enjoy it. He was with us in spirit because the track really came out great. Bobby graciously said, I'll sub for TJ today and came in and just knocked it out of the park. Bobby is, is great, you know. He just sits there and he listens and he'll start playing something. And before you know it, you go, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the part, you know, because again, it, it, he's part of that, that group that, and they were even saying today, they would get into the room and they wouldn't even really know what they were going to play. They would just run it down and next thing you know, I mean, of course, the great producers and the songwriters would give them ideas, but they would just sit there and vamp and, oh, wow, how about this line? Before you know it, the song would, the way they say it, it would like materialize before their eyes. And that's what happened today. You know, the song was, as it was running down, we just watched these amazing parts kind of happen. And again, it was almost like, you know, I don't want to sound spooky, but like, like something or someone was guiding us, you know, toward the finish line. The guitar that I was playing today uh, originally belonged to TJ and I thought it would be a testament to his memory to actually play it for this project. Because I know that he originally was supposed to, supposed to play on the session, and unfortunately, that, you know, that wasn't the case. So here I am, and I'm glad that his wife, Anita, asked me to play his guitar, and it felt great. I know that his spirit was in every, on every fret, man. I could feel it, you know. The Soul Survivors work with us in the pocket, and uh, I've been a fan of theirs since I was 11 years old. They do uh, the Philly Soul thing better than anybody I know, and uh, I thought, well, 
what better song than OJ's Backstabbers? And they do it so well. So I brought in a great crew with Wally Smith and Greg and Bobby Eli, who's played on countless hit songs that came out of Philly International. Fran Smith was a monster on bass today. And, uh, and the sole survivors, Charlie and Richie Ingui, who um, are two of my favorite singers in the world. Guys that aren't from Philly to have Philly soul, and, that, and Philly soul is as good as it gets. I, wherever you go, it's just a concentration of of, uh, of great songs, great music, great musicians that, that have come out of Philadelphia. Not just Gamble Hut, but through the years, Richie and Charlie captured it. And I remember them from the from the very beginning, and they've just blew me away. And the amazing thing is, these two guys. They sound the same, if not better, with age than they did in the beginning. And uh, Expressway is just one of the first, if not the first, Philadelphia rock anthem. Charlie and Richie, Crimson Records. First hit for Kenny Gamble that put Kenny and Leon on the map. And I was fortunate enough to put that deal together because I had a piece of Crimson Records with my manager, Nat Sigel, and two kids who had the record museum, Jerry and Jarrett. And I said to him, you have to see this group, they're working at 13th and Locust, called the Soul Survivors. Beside being soulful, they know the music. You know, they're not from Philadelphia. They're New York way, but they're Philadelphians, man. The great thing about having a hit record is you go out and you play these songs, and people come up to you and they say, you know, I remember when that song first came out, I was here and I was doing this, and, it, and you know, you have this special place in people's history. No one can take that from you, you know, and that's a blessing. It's so nice to know somebody like that from hearing their songs and then get to know them and then really feel like you're good friends with them just because, you know, like the music is almost like icing now, you know, like I would be friends with these guys anyway, and then you remember, oh shit, that's those guys that did Expressway, you know, you know, but that, that's the part that blew me away so much in, in the first place, but then you become friends, and it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I love those guys, man. My brother and I have been singing together since probably he was about, uh, well, we were both teenagers, basically, when we started singing together. And uh, whatever we have today has been, uh, has evolved from those early times that we spent in doo-wop, et cetera, singing that kind of thing. Playing with the Soul Survivors, every time I do it is like, uh, it's so special. Uh, they, because, you know, no one sings like that. Dynamically, you know, they take it from a high to a low. and. You know, they're virtuosos with what they do, blue-eyed soul. I think they're, they're a couple of the original cats, especially out of Philadelphia. And uh, they were uh, the beginning of something special. And they still, at this point of their career, knock it out of the park every time they get up. Like today, they're incredible. And every time they get on stage within the pocket, they, they're just lights out good. You're smiling in your face all the time. They want to take your place for backstabbers. Backstabbers, they're smiling in your face all the time. They want to take your place, the backstabbers. Backstabbers. The whole in the pocket project is about vibe, is about feel, it's about emotion. You know, we don't do songs because we think, oh, what will people like? No, we do songs because we like them, and there's an emotion there. And so it just seemed like this was the right time to do this song. And again, with 
with most recently, you know, the passing of some great players and things, we just felt, wow, let's let's just get back to that kind of a song. And the emotions in the in the room today were incredible. I mean, you know, these people were in the room with us, you know, and it, it just transcends on the track. I mean, the track gives me the chicken skin, man. It it's magical. It really is. I keep getting all these visits from my friends. that they have another side to them that they actually promote um, music education is something that I was been very interested in and involved in for a long long time and that they raise awareness for this you always want to perpetuate the uh, opportunity for people to make a career out of music my hats off to them it's just a great situation and if you haven't seen them this is a lot of fun this is really a lot of fun this is the 14th song in our series of songs within the pocket i've said it before we can't do this without your support it's been amazing all along i think five years we've been doing this coming up on six and uh, it's been a great ride and as long as you're supporting we're doing thank you What they doing?